Paul Horn. I'm an entomologist. For the last 20 years I've run a small company called IPM Technologies. What we do is help farmers to implement IPM. Now our approach is to actually teach the farmers or the farmers advisors, the agronomists, how to make decisions based on an IPM approach. There's a couple of different ways that they can achieve what they want. Uh, a pesticide based approach, uh, the use of biological control, insects and mites that eat the pest insects and mites, and also using what we call cultural controls or management tools. So that might be a resistant variety or irrigation or soil management in some way. We use all three in a compatible way. The first and most important thing is to know what the pests are. But in many cases, uh, people using the broad spectrum insecticides haven't needed to know too much about what the range of pests that they have to deal with really are. Secondly is use all the tools available to control those pests. So integrate biological, cultural and chemical control measures. Lastly, uh, what chemicals are most appropriate to deal with the pest problems? So we're, we're often asked um, if, if my neighbour isn't using IPM, can it work on my farm? And the answer is yes, it can. And so we see it as our job to provide them with the information they need so that they can select the right chemicals for the right job. There's a lot of benefits in worker safety, environmental safety. Uh, chemical companies advertising their products featuring the aspect that they're safe to beneficial species. It's very difficult for farmers to, to trust something that they haven't seen work before. And they might have heard of it working on other people's farms, but they need to see it on their own farms. Uh, once they've seen that in action, in most cases, there's only a few key beneficials that they have to identify. And as long as they don't kill them, they can rely on them being there. My name is Peter Schroes. I suppose I'm the founder of Peter Schroes and Sons. My name is uh, Darren Schroes and I've been in the, um, the business for about 29 years. I laid the foundations and the boys have built on that. Currently grow seven different crops, which is leeks are the main ones. Uh, then as far as our approach goes, we, we don't focus on bigger, but we do focus on better. I started to rely quite heavily on chemical and I did that for probably 30 years. Darren alerted me to how dangerous the chemicals I was using had become. In 1998, I took a trip to Holland and my cousins run uh, glass houses and I noticed that they were using IPM. First time I heard of it. Yeah, but back in, uh, in 2000 is when um, I took on IPM. I rang up Paul Horn, our entomologist. I had trouble with two spotted mite in our leeks. All I was doing was spraying harder and harder chemicals each year and they were becoming more and more resistant. Paul Horn came in and he said, stop spraying. Whatever you do, stop. And I said, I can't stop spraying. We're exporting Japan. They need clean leaks. I, um, I done a little experiment at home. Then I went out in the field and got some two-spotted mite and I sprinkled them over the top of the leaks. Then I went out to a crop that we don't spray at all and that was parsnips. But I got half a dozen little persimilis, sprinkled them over top of the um, two-spotted mite. And uh, yeah, within two weeks, they cleaned up a lot. And I thought, geez, if that can happen in a controlled environment, yeah. I'm sure it can happen out in the field. The, uh, the Japanese market, they're very strict on using uh, chemicals. When they found out that we use IPM and they looked at our chemical uh, program, they were certainly impressed with that. Over the last couple of years, we've been using a lot of compost. And uh, I think I can say that this year, we see the result it's not only compost, but that certainly has been a big factor to it. Our leek crop has been the best it's ever been. And, and like Dad was saying, the, the crops are record crops that we're getting. I'm Adam Schroes from Schroes & Sons. I'm a third generation farmer. Uh, we grow leeks, celery, spinach, rocket uh, and processing peas. We've been using IPM to control our insects for probably 10 years now. We were one of the first to introduce it into vegetables. We, we got to a point where we had a lot of resistance to the chemicals that were out there and uh, we, were, we ended up with damage in the crops and just no control at all. It's all market driven. We have to harvest every day uh, without fail regardless of the weather. So we're 
as well as trying to control some soil borne disease, we're using cover crops um, to try and help break up the compaction and open up the soil. Yeah, we, I have needed a lot of advice, especially with identifying insects and, and life cycles of insects. We have an entomologist come in weekly. Many years ago, uh, my family had a lot of problems with nematodes in celery. We decided to try some mustard crops for and some different biofumigation crops. At times we grew two crops in a row um, to totally clean the soil. You know, the, the journey still continues. We're still learning every day and uh, nature never stays the same. My name's Wayne Timonson. Uh, I've been farming all my life. Uh, we grow potatoes for the um, crisping industry. We also grow some maize, broccolini, some wheat. IPM is it's about monitoring your bugs. We get Paul to come once a week when the potatoes are growing. It gives us an idea of whether he thinks the numbers are high or low, whether they're going up or down. Aphids was another thing that used to be sprayed for quite regularly. Um, we'll find the numbers will go up a little bit. We had a couple of issues this year with the numbers went up and within a week to a fortnight Paul said just keep an eye on it and the beneficials came in and they were all parasitised. If we've got a crop in the 12 months before the potatoes, we'll put a biofumigant called mustard in so that it creates a gas that you seal the soil over and that gas then allows us to not have to use chemicals and we're getting very good results with using the mustard. Um, the benefits with the IPM, um, it has saved money. I just think from the environment and from supplying people with a sustainable in, uh, food that's healthy and free of pesticides, I think there's huge benefits there. By doing this, we definitely are getting less soil-borne disease and we're also finding we're using less cultivation. Um, we're seeing the soil definitely come back much better. We make sure we always have some sort of a cover crop, whether it be mustard, um, rye, rye corn. We grow a lot of rye corn as an interim crop. My business in 10 to, 10 to 20 years' time, I hope it can um, be more sustainable than what it is. We get a better better understanding of all the beneficials that are in our soils and get rid of any uh, man-made chemicals if possible, that's what I would like to do. So I think there has been a shift right across the, the industry that shows that the, the direction in which it's going.